and welcome to Q Primary Presents Intentional Tech. I am your host, Kayla Harlow, a former first grade teacher, ed tech advocate, yet limited screen time parent. Today's episode is with the co-founder of Ignite Reading, a virtual high dosage tutoring program based in the science of reading. Driven by an unshakable commitment to ensuring that every student is given the right to learn to read on time, Jessica reitz Lurisky is our guest today. And she has co-founded a virtual high dosage foundational reading skills intervention literacy program that delivers 15 minutes of daily one-on-one -on -one virtual tutoring in schools. Launched in the height of the pandemic at just one school site, they are now serving nearly 2,500 students in schools and districts across seven states. With over 200 tutors in the field currently in its final pilot phase before it begins to scale to its goal of reaching 50,000 students in the next five years. Jessica and her team are champions in utilizing technology to support equitable and accessible quality literacy instruction. And today she shares what impact intentional tech has had on this movement. So without further ado, Hi, Jessica. Thanks for coming on today. I am so happy to have finally connected. Um, we've kind of crossed paths slowly over the course of the past couple of months, but um, I am really thrilled about the work you're doing with Ignite Reading and would love to hear more about kind of where you came from, what set your heart on fire for education and what kind of motivated you to get where you are now. Kayla, I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me and for your curiosity and excitement about the work that I am doing to ensure that all kids once and for all have the right to learn to read. What set my heart on fire? Oh my gosh. Well, the first thing I'll share is that um, I didn't plan to go into teaching although I should have because I come from a family of educators and I'm also the oldest child. I have six younger siblings and growing up, I was insufferable in the way that I forced them to play school and I was always the teacher. And so um, my senior year of college at UCLA, a Teach for America recruiter came into my poli-sci class and started talking about the program. And I was like, this sounds way more interesting and exciting than law school. So why not take two years and um, commit myself to service and working with kids? And I, I went into it from a place of great uh, naive, naivety, if I'm saying that right. Um, <laughs> the irony of being someone who's all about structured literacy and then I, I can't I, remember I, how to pronounce a word, which is I, why structured literacy is so important because our language is so hard. Um, but I uh, was in my very first year of teaching as a fifth grade teacher in the Bronx. I did not come through a formal teacher prep program, although even if I had, I very likely still would not have been prepared to teach my kids. Yeah. And I had a classroom full of students, many of who were still non-readers. And I was utterly ill-equipped to serve them. Um, I had never been trained in how to teach kids to read. I didn't have curriculum to teach kids to read. I didn't have professional learning to help me implement a curriculum to teach my kids to read. And um, I was... Like I, I, it just like blew my mind. And I remember being in um, my first week of my first year of teaching and just having this moment of deep indignation because my eyes were being wide open to how deeply inequitable public education is in our country. And we didn't talk back then about privilege. And so I didn't have like a vocabulary around my privilege. And, um, you know, I didn't grow up in a super wealthy family, but I, I still won the birth lottery because I grew up white. I had college educated parents and 
we lived in a zip code where I attended a quote unquote good public school. And we can unpack <laughs> what that means. Um, and yet I'm looking at my classroom of just these beautiful babies. And it was like, the only difference I could see was that they were poor and they were black and brown. And I was just like, this is not okay because these are children. Yeah. And um, I spent my whole first two years of teaching not knowing how to teach them to read. But I had made this commitment in my heart that first week of my first year that I was going to stay in education and that I was going to commit my career to finding a way to ensure that no teacher felt the way I felt, wanting desperately to serve their children and not knowing how. Not how yeah. and, and I had no idea at the time how I was going to do that. It was just this like intention that I said. It was this like first like spark. And in my third year of teaching, I moved to a charter school and they happened to use an evidence-based foundational reading skills curriculum. And I learned how to teach my first graders how to read. And that was like the first spark for me. Where magic. It was like, magic. Yeah, it was magic. It was like, my mind was blown because yes, reading is a science and reading is not rocket science. And it was like, so what are the ingredients here? I have an evidence-based scripted program. I am being held accountable to implementing this with fidelity. And I am collecting data, reviewing the data and regrouping and reteaching kids accordingly. And um, that was sort of like the next step in my journey around trying to figure out how to ensure kids can learn how to read. And as I moved into different roles in education and learned different parts of the system, I went into school leadership. I was a literacy specialist for a network of schools in New York City. I then co-founded my first ed tech company with a literacy app that I designed. I then became um, you know, CEO of a national nonprofit that has high quality literacy programs in their portfolio. And as I kept taking on these different opportunities and understanding the opportunities and challenges, I kept coming back to this passion I have around making sure kids learn to read because learning to read is the operating system of education. It's everything else. Exactly. Not, exactly. If you cannot read, you cannot learn. And on a parallel path, um, I became a mother, which ignited even, you know, more low-lying chronic anger in me around how um, inequitable education is and, and what I was able to provide my daughter versus what other kids may or may not be getting that that are that's going to set them up, which then means it's even more important that schools become a safety net. Mm -hmm. And um, right after my daughter Penelope was born, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And when you go through an experience like that, that is so terrifying, especially as a brand new mom and life changing, it puts everything else into perspective. And I mean, I was already really intense and I became even more <laughs> intense after that experience. I appreciate your authenticity there. <laughs> <laughs> because it was just like, you know, this, I, I really believe that apart from being the best mom I can possibly be and raising, you know, a compassionate, tiny human that my purpose on this planet is to help ensure as many kids as possible learn to read and that is the legacy that I want to leave behind and I want to spend every single day doing the most purposeful work possible in service of teaching kids to read I can't solve climate change I can't solve you know racism in our country and at the end of the day, what I can do is teach kids to read 
teach teachers to teach kids to read, scale a program that hopefully ensures every single first grader in our country learns to read by the end of first grade. And by igniting their literacy, I think we create a more informed citizenry. We create the next generation of scientists who will solve these problems. We dismantle racism by making sure all of these kids who are being denied access to reading learn to read. And we um, you know, fundamentally re-envision what's possible for public education. Absolutely. And just like you said, having kind of that compounding or snowball effect of attacking all of these bigger, even bigger problems that feel um, intangible to us as an individual at this time by providing access to literacy and strong literacy instructional practices, we can kind of open up the doors to all of those other um, issues that our world is facing. So I, oh, we relate on so much and you set my heart on fire for what you're doing. Um, so how does Ignite Reading work? Can you give me a little bit of, I know when we started talking, we said that we this was going to be a quick conversation and we still have to keep it on cue because I know that we, we both can just go crazy about it, but give me a quick synopsis of Ignite Reading and kind of how the program is outlined to work. Okay, great. So I'll start with the school side of it, right? Which is like where the rubber hits the road with implementation. And then I'll back into what we're doing behind the scenes as it relates to how we are recruiting and developing tutors and what that means for the future of the teacher talent pipeline and teacher preparation programs. All right. So we are an early literacy company. We are entirely focused upon the lower strands of Scarborough's reading rope. So what we are trying to do is ensure that kids have access to learning to crack the code. The English language is a code. Kids need explicit, direct, systematic, coherent instruction in order to crack it. And they need lots of at-bats or repetition in order to create that automaticity so that they can then be fluent readers. This is not the game. The game is being able to make meaning of complex text and to comprehend. But if you cannot even read text, then you can't comprehend it. And the crisis in our country right now is that kids are not being given universal, equitable access to learning to crack the code. And even while we have this science of reading tidal wave and you have legislation around teachers being trained in the science of reading and districts adopting evidence-based programs, there's still an implementation gap while all that change management happens. Absolutely. So what we're doing is we are partnering with schools and districts and we are the foundational skills safety net. We embed as part of a school's literacy ecosystem, which is deeply intentional. We are not othered, we are not siloed. We are part of what you are doing to intentionally transform literacy in your school system. Concretely, what that looks like is during typically the literacy block and the independent reading portion of that block, kids are logging into Ignite and they are meeting daily one-on-one -on -one for 15 minutes with a highly trained tutor educator who is teaching them the precise decoding skills they need in order to close their decoding gaps and move them to the point of being fluent readers. I love it. I'm so... <clears throat> we had kind of talked about go, delving into how these specific tutors, what their qualifications and their training is, um, their availability, because they it's within the school day, right? Can you yeah. delve into a little bit more of that structure? Um, because we do know that teachers nationally are trying their best. Every teacher wants the best for 